Hey everyone, it's Ross here on MGF Customs and today I am so excited to be doing a full breakdown on the biggest, the best, and the tallest LEGO Marvel set of all time, the Daily Bugle. The set number for this is going to be 76178. The recommended ages are going to be 18 and up. It has 3,772 pieces, 25 minifigures, and the whole thing will be retailing for $299.99. Uh, it's going to be available on June 1st, and then May 26th is the VIP access. This whole thing is designed by Mark John Stafford at uh, LEGO, and I am completely blown away. Now, throughout this video, I'm going to do my best to go through everything with you guys one step at a time, one minifigure at a time, and one level of this building at a time. If I miss anything, I do apologize, but that's why I have you guys and you can always feel free to correct anything I miss down in the comments. I do want to thank the Brothers Brick, Jay's Brick Blog, Brick Fanatics, all the main LEGO media fan sites that have provided a lot of these images and also the reviews. I'm only able to go this in depth during the video because of the reviews from the fan sites like Hoth Bricks and the Brothers Brick. So again, huge thanks to them and their reviews will be linked down in the description below. Okay, so the minifigures. Again, there are 25 in in total and I could not have been more shocked by how incredible this variety is when I first saw these images. Now of course I understand where a lot of you guys are coming from. At first glance this is incredibly exciting but then you dig a little bit deeper. A lot of these minifigures are rehashed, many of the parts reused, but personally I think the character debuts here really do help to make up for it and honestly this is just such a perfect set of minifigures for this build that it doesn't really bother me too much. I would have preferred that for a set of this size that LEGO would have added a bit more leg printing to a few of these characters even though of course the double molded legs featured throughout does really help to compensate. There is definitely you know a lack of detail but it's really no big deal. A lack of leg printing on LEGO Marvel characters has just always been any other day of the week for us LEGO Marvel fans of course. Spider-Man is the 2021 redesign with that glorious arm printing. Peter Parker surprisingly has has a new torso and an Indiana Jones bag there. However, the face, of course, is just a rehash. We've seen this face used countless times, not only on like Ant-Man from Avengers Endgame, for example, but also on Peter Parker from Spider-Man Far From Home. Miles Morales is just the same figure from the Miles Morales mech armor released in early 2021, but still a great figure, of course. Ghost Spider, or of course, Spider-Gwen, is the same one that debuted in early 2021 as well in the Monster Truck versus Mysterio. An actual Gwen Stacy minifigure is finally making her debut here as well and uh, she has a new torso but unfortunately uses Ray's face which I mean let's be real I don't I don't think any of us can really unsee that this is a really odd choice that I'm definitely swapping out. Spider-Ham is the same one that was seen in the 2020 Venomsaurus Venomo Ven Venmo Ven uh, the Venom dinosaur ambush thing and I am very excited to eventually get this figure because I actually missed out on that set. Out of all the new day debut minifigures coming in this set though I personally am the most excited for Daredevil. We finally have Matt Murdock fully realized in a Lego set. God I feel like I have been waiting my entire life for this and he looks really good with printing of course on both sides of his torso and he uses a red black panther horn piece and I mean you know it is what it is. I think it actually really works surprisingly well here and uh, honestly it's not even something that I really thought of. He does also have a pair of red bars for his batons, of course, and I just love that face design. The Punisher is also making his debut here as well. Frank Castle has finally arrived, and he's got new printing all around. I really do love the torso especially. The face is kind of whatever. The Band-Aid is especially a little goofy looking, but that's okay. This is a Lego minifigure after all, so I think we can excuse a Band-Aid, and the guns are obviously kind of what you would expect, and they work. Now, I was not expecting Blade to make his debut in this set as well. When I first heard about this, it was a huge surprise for me. Obviously, the torso is completely new along with that fantastic head print. So if you want to get hunting some vampires now in Lego, maybe get uh, this guy chasing after your Morbius, who unfortunately doesn't exist yet, but it's actually featured on stickers you'll see later on in the video. And he comes with a pair of katanas that, of course, slide into that same like katana holster neck brace piece that you've seen before. Felicia Hardy is here. Black Cat has also arrived, making her debut 
in a Lego set as well. We already saw the leaks of this minifigure. I mean, we saw leaks for like the Punisher 2 and many other characters and different elements of this set. Um, but the point is, she looks great with a fantastic printed face, double-sided, of course, and the torso is awesome with the fur on there, and she's got a pair of double molded boots. With the return also of the white Storm hairpiece, I don't think we've seen this since 2014. Firestar? is in this set and kind of like a big set piece, uh, excuse the pun, like actually on top of the build. And uh, I, you know what? I was not at all expecting to ever get a Firestar minifigure. Um, so I am pleasantly surprised to see this. She looks great. I love the tones that Lego used on her torso design and the masked face look great. Red Wonder Woman hairpiece. I mean, yeah, I hope maybe we'll get an Iceman figure to eventually pair with her. Now for our villains, of course, Green Goblin, who takes uh, quite literally the center stage of the set. Um, he is, of course, a rehash from the early 2021 sets, and he's got an Indiana Jones bag there, and of course, his brick-built glider. Spider-Man PS4 inspired Dr. Octopus is also back from the early 2021 Spider-Man sets and these tentacles are much better though and they're highly posable thanks to the action pose mini stand pieces which I have yet to own so I'm excited to learn more about what the hell these are. Mysterio another early 2021 Spider-Man sets minifig is back again just with no green ghost piece like the one he had in the monster truck versus Mysterio set. I think that is pretty disappointing because it would have looked amazing on the Daily Bugle. Venom is back just the exact same venom we've had since 2019 a great minifigure though and they made a new tentacle build for him though just to make him stand out a bit same thing can be said for carnage same exact one since 2019 which is totally okay it's a great minifig and he also has a new tentacle build sandman is also another rehash just again from the early 2021 sets i personally think that the head on this minifigure is awful i cannot understand why lego used a clone head of all things so i am very excited to swap that out for myself but he does have that amazing, of course, you know, the, the unique Sandman piece that he attaches to. You cannot really complain there. And he's also got this giant brick built Sandman assembly, which really complements the set as well as he's fighting off Daredevil in uh, much of the promotional material. Now this brings us to our regular civilian characters, the regular people here. J. Jonah Jameson though is not regular. He is iconic with a new double sided face. It is so great great to see him making his return, but that face I think is actually a little bit wonky, um, but I do appreciate the webbed up alternative expression that is so fantastic. And he's got this sick double molded pen piece. Betty Brant is included, which is very cool to see. Her head is not new though, and her torso is definitely from the Harry Potter Ginny Wesley from the 2020 figure. Robbie Robertson is actually included here, the Daily Bugle editor, and he's got a new torso and the Rise of Skywalker Lando face which makes sense. This also makes sense, but I was not expecting to see Ben Urich at all. This is so cool. And I actually thought that it was Roger Harrington from the MCU movies, but uh, it's not, of course. And he does use the Bruce Wayne 2019 torso and the face first debuted with the Diagon Alley in 2020. Yeah, to me, this is definitely Roger Harrington. I, I cannot unsee that. Aunt May is here, of course. She's gotta be sporting that same face that she's had since 2016. However, she does have a new sweater that uh, was taken from Hermione. For some really deep cut characters, you have Bernie the Cab Driver with a face from the recent Jurassic World sets. Amber Grant is in here, and because there's no Mary Jane, she can kind of double as Zendaya's MJ. Of course, a simple hairpiece change would just really do the job. You're pretty close there. Ron Barney is here too, and uh, I mean, like the previous two characters, I have no idea who this is, but he does have the Fastos head from the upcoming Eternal sets. So while I know everyone who has been buying the Spider-Man sets for the last couple of years have been very excited, but if you caught my Infinity Saga videos, you'll know that I have skipped practically all of the Lego Spider-Man sets of the last couple of years, except for maybe one or two. So I really don't have any of these minifigures and I am actually really glad that I skipped most of those sets now because all of these rehashes have made it worth it in the end for people like me personally. However, obviously I am really excited to eventually get a Wilson Fisk, possibly using that new Thanos mold that we're seeing in the upcoming Infinity Saga set. 
has. Like I mentioned briefly there, Mary Jane is not included here again, unfortunately. And I also, since we got Gwen Stacy, would have loved to see a Miles Morales alter ego minifigure as well. Those minifigures are inevitably going to get made in the future, so it's not a big deal that they aren't included here, but it would have been nice and it would have made this minifigure assortment feel more complete. Now, before we step into the actual Daily Bugle itself, since you're going to be seeing these stickers throughout and I might miss one or two, I want to make sure I give you a chance to take a look at them here because, again, thanks to Hoth Bricks and the Brothers Brick, we have perfect photos of them. So, from left to right, these are all so great. This Lego set pretty much like has lore. Uh, so, we have City Power Blackout, We Need Electro, Rhino Escapes from Zoo, Spider Man Finally Unmasked? Question mark? No. Uh, who is Spider Man? Doc Ox still at large, Times Scare featuring Green Goblin, reward for photos of Spider-Man, no crime, no thanks to Spider Menace, and you get four of those panels, Lego Man walks on the moon, Spider-Man threat or menace, new building for New York City number one newspaper, Daily Bugle, of course this being that new building, Spider-Man no more, I guess possibly a reference to Spider-Man. Man 2 there. The Conspirator with a UFO abducting a cow. This one I think might be my favorite. Nelson and Murdoch win big lawsuit. That is so cool. And then Fisk occupying the front of Business Magazine. Man, just picking through these. I need an Electro, a Rhino Big Fig, a Wilson Fisk Big Fig. I need a Nelson and Murdoch pair of minifigures. I mean, they cannot continue to tease us like this. On this sheet, we have a lot more random miscellaneous stuff like screens, Daily Bugle signs up top there, the taxi stickers, vending machine stickers. Down in the corner, we have like a Miles Morales sticker which is kind of an Easter egg in the build, along with, I believe, a Green Goblin sticker, or I can't tell if that's a Jackal logo. However, we have the giant active news feed screen where J. Jonah Jameson is, of course, interviewing Dr. Kurt Connors, who is, of course, the lizard. And then I mentioned the Jackal a second ago there because you have Miles Warren also on the line, along with Scarlet Spider, who is seemingly very confused. And that is just an all-out great design, and that reads under there at the bottom uh, on the lower third third clone epidemic out of control and is Spider-Man to blame? Clearly I assume that's alluding to the Spider-Verse and the different uh, Spider-People all coming through. Above that it looks like we have Dr. Octopus holding a press conference with Sandman, Green Goblin, and Mysterio all present where it says villains promise to stop being bad guys. Can they be trusted? That's pretty great. Next to that you have this just in. Vampire spotted on Subway. Of course that is Morbius. Uh, unfortunately though he is not included either and then underneath on the lower third panic as garlic supplies hit all-time low that's pretty hilarious not gonna lie next to that you have a peeling billboard of just the facts with J. Jonah Jameson you have a smaller version of that news feed with the three characters all on the feed and of course because it's live and then you also do have a vote Osborne for mayor banner here which is very cool and man I need that Norman Osborne minifigure then on the third sheet, we have, again, just a lot more miscellaneous stuff, you know, license plates, we have different signs, headlights, a uh, newsstand for the one that's in front of the building, you know, sewer grates, more taxi signs, and like iHeart New York stickers, uh, you know, exit signs. This one has Eddie was here, of course, from Venom there, along with uh, the Green Goblin symbol also present there, and I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's clearly Green Goblin symbol. But these bits here in the center, which I believe appear on some screens you'll see shortly, missed calls from Eddie Brock along with some sent mail to Peter Parker from J. Jonah Jameson's computer saying you're fired. Alright so here we go with the building itself. Now one important thing that you should immediately recognize is the entire Daily Bugle is built on a basic foundation of a standard 32 by 32 base plate which makes it fit with modulars. So if you want to add the Daily Bugle to your series of modular buildings. But I'm going to 
work my way up level by level until we reach the roof and then I'll probably discuss the vehicles and uh, exterior detachable elements toward the end. So just beginning with the first level here, the Brothers Brick were really great in including various pictures of the build process as they went along. And obviously you have tons of jumper plates for various different pieces of furniture and accessories and minifigures to stand and things of that nature. You can already see some of the stickers appearing on like the power box. The little rat is there to add a little bit of life by those boxes. And as the building starts to come up, you can already see just a really great lobby with all the green tile there, a fantastic receptionist desk. You have the little security door there, a vending machine, which doesn't actually function, but that's totally okay. A really nice looking elevator. Some of those Daily Bugle newspapers mounted up on the wall. The sticker with Eddie Brock's graffiti appears on the back of that security door. I think my favorite little detail here on the back of the building though, above the back door is definitely the little backpack tucked into the wall behind a web. On the side of the building, you have our first real bit of battle damage where the wall can actually slip in and out as an optional thing. As pictured on the front of the box, you can have Sandman right there at the front entrance of the Daily Bugle fighting Daredevil, which is very cool. On the front right corner, you have the newsstand, which of course is meant for Amber there. And you have all kinds of stickers on this thing from the newspaper up front. Yet again, just like the ones inside the building there to the Wilson Fisk Business Magazine tile we pointed out earlier along with the other New York City tiles that are all there, which are very cool stickers all around. A little bit above the front entrance, you have that giant main sticker of that live feed you saw earlier with Jay Jonah interviewing, you know, Kirk Connors, Scarlet Spider, you saw it a minute ago, and then right next to it, the press conference with the villains. And so these are the main panels that you see actually displayed on the front of the building. A little bit further back on the left side of the building is where you have the Norman Osborn election banner. The second level, I think, might actually be my favorite section in terms of detail, not only from, you know, the beginning of the scaffolding on the outside or the more historic newspapers that are kind of hung up there, mounted on the wall there too, but you have just this really cool, complex build that sets up so much personality for these different journalists and reporters to the jumper plates being used for the drawers, the positioning of the keyboards and the stacks of newspapers. Keep an eye out again for all the stickers you saw earlier making their appearances here. The screens up on the top there in the middle, the lamps. I mean, there's so much here to appreciate down to the mugs on more jumper plates or even little wine bottles hidden away. This is just so interesting to look at, not to mention how great it looks with the minifigures actually populating this little spot or the elevator in the corner that's also present. If it wasn't already obvious, the entire front wall with those billboards and everything that I just showed you does come away. Things may seem a little bit simpler on the third level, but they only continue to get more interesting with the subtlety of Peter's very simple bare bones office, of course, with the iconic spider man picture frame up there on the wall with a couple of sticky notes over in the stock room right through the door next to his desk you have a copy machine a couple of boxes a filing cabinet his camera up on top of it a pizza box next to that some more newspapers stacked in the corner a spider web up above the elevator which apparently doesn't really line up with the first two levels of the elevator there's a spider of course up there on the wall too and through that back door behind the filing cabinet you have have the balcony, which looks really cool. The sand green wall peering through the glass there is a little bit awkward from Peter's office, but it is what it is. I don't know why, but even this balcony looks amazing regardless. Beyond all of that though, kind of the main really eye-catching part of the front of the Daily Bugle is of course the Green Goblin crashing out of Peter's office using a ton of ball joints from the Mixel sets. Uh, those are being employed a lot in the Daily Bugle actually to achieve a lot of these different angles and really cool looking effects. This is just so cool and so authentic and so real looking. I am blown away by just how good this looks. I know some people kind of wish that maybe there would be like a repair function so the Daily Bugle wasn't always kind of frozen in these dynamic moments, but I mean, what can you do? I think that's a mod that you can definitely do yourself if you so chose, but for me, I 
definitely would love to just keep it as it is. And if we follow that red fire escape further up to the fourth level here, that finally brings us up to the main man's office for J. Jonah Jameson. We've got another stack of newspapers on his desk here on that little trans blue panel screen. We've got that email to Peter telling him he's fired. There are a couple award statues behind him in the form of a pair of gold micro figures, a little geode next to them on top of the cabinet there too with the trans pink elements within it. Such cool pieces here. And through that door that sort of brings us to the receptionist area, um, sort of the lobby as you wait for J. Jonah Jameson inside. And this is Benny Brand's desk, of course, right in front of the elevator, which is a bit of an eyesore. However, you also up on that screen there, mounted in the corner, have a shrunken down version of the main panel sticker that you see live broadcasting on the front of the building too. So you've got some consistency going on there, which I really appreciate. And she's got 99 missed calls from Eddie Brock on her screen. So that's definitely a little bit creepy. And of course, again, I think it goes without saying the entire front wall comes away so you can access both rooms and the roof. You have the water tower, the main antenna on that water tower. You've got the Goblin Army sticker along with the Miles Morales sticker. You have the Brick Built Daily Bugle sign up here, which actually has a Brick Built Daily Bugle right in the center. This just all looks fantastic. Now, of course, we've seen a lot of the inside now, but populating the exterior of the building, there are so many opportunities, whether that is Dr. Octopus hanging off of the Daily Bugle sign, hanging off of the edge of the roof there, or Spidey dangling from the sign too as he tries to stop the Green Goblin from destroying the building. Obviously, you've got like Spider-Gwen and Mysterio using the fire escape. As we pointed out earlier, Daredevil fighting Sandman on the ground level. And these are only just a few of the possibilities because of course, you can have Felicia Hardy up there hidden away on the balcony, not really participating in any of the fights. You can have Blade secretly keeping watch for some vampires though in, in broad daylight, I don't think he's gonna have much luck. There's a clear peg for, what's her face? Um, what is her name? I forgot. 12 seconds later. On the main antenna, there's a clear peg for Firestar and she's got a ton of energy pieces that are almost kind of like part of the build up there, which is really cool. Right there hanging off of the peg specifically to accommodate that minifigure. It is amazing looking. I love how they have the freaking Punisher facing down Carnage in the back alley of the Daily Bugle. I mean, this whole set just looks like a day in Lego Marvel Superheroes 2013 to me. I mean, that's just what this set screams to me. And second to last here, we've got a taxi build, which is so good looking. I mean, what a clean and sharp looking design. Even just the simple little taxi is just so freaking cool. And you can see too many figures inside. So Bernie and then either Amber for a quick escape or any character of your choosing. And finally, there is a four wheeler included for Spider-Man and as depicted in a lot of the promotional material, it can sort of attach to the side to roll down the building, which is definitely pretty fun. It's a little goofy looking, but cool to have. This closing shot here at the end of part one of the Brothers Brick review on the Daily Bugle reveals to us that each level can be separated, not just the front walls, but individually you can remove every level of the Daily Bugle. And I mean, just looking at each of the modular sections and every detachable section of the set just laid out here, it is just so wild, man. And in Inevitably, the instruction manual is incredibly thick, but man, do I just really appreciate the passion poured into this build. It really does show, even if you may be slightly let down by the minifigures for whatever reason, I think that this is the definitive Lego Spider-Man set. This is just the full package and the ultimate Lego Spider-Man set that I think we could only ever dream of as kids. And is it $300? And are we going to have to uh, sell our souls and sacrifice our futures to get this set? Probably but that's okay. And so let me know if you're gonna be there on June 1st to pick up this set or earlier on, of course, May 26th. Coming up really soon here for VIP access. Obviously, if you haven't already, you just have to make a quick account with LEGO and it's no big deal. However, 
That is going to do it for my video covering the new Daily Bugle, the ultimate, the best, and biggest, and the tallest Lego Marvel set. And man, a lot of work also went into this video. I didn't want to just kind of get it out on day one because there's so much to talk about here, and I wanted to make sure I kind of hit all of the important notes as we walk through this together. So definitely be sure to drop this video a like below if you enjoyed it up to this point and if you stuck around to the end please do let me know down in the comments i'd love to hear back from you and what you think of the daily bugle so far so let's get the discussion going down in the comments guys and also be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the video and if you want to stick around for future content here on the channel and uh, otherwise i'm gonna get back to working on my mandalorian season two figures again i've been doing so many of these videos recently it's been kind of crazy but lego is delivering us some of the best lego superhero sets of all time so that's it. I really want to go to bed. So take care guys. Stay safe and keep creating.